Hola amigos, feliz dia del árbol. This is Stephanie from Apex Languages with another vocabulario vivo. We've been celebrating the planet all this week, starting with Earth Day on Wednesday and Arbor Day today. Have you planted your tree? Me neither, but it's just as well. All my plants die anyway. In case you were wondering what the Spanish word for tree is, it's árbol. Repeat that after me. Árbol, árbol, árbol. See the similarity between arbor and árbol? That's because arbor was a Latin word for tree. If you remember the holiday, hopefully it'll help you remember this word. In any case, today we're going to continue talking about Spanish in the workplace by introducing some new career-related vocabulary. Before that, though, let's review briefly what we learned last week about el trabajo, the work. Okay, here we have la empleada, la trabajadora. You know, two different words, basically the same meaning. Uh, I'm using the form with an A because she's a female. Uh, if I wanted a, a, to describe a man, I would say el empleado, el trabajador. Over here, we have el empleador, right? Empleado is employee, empleador, employer. Or if you just want boss, el jefe, or la jefa for a female boss, el supervisor for supervisor. So supervisor, they're spelled the same, but remember to pronounce it like in Spanish, supervisor. Finally, on the right is el compañero de trabajo. We have that big, long, uh, fun phrase for coworker. I'll repeat that again, el compañero de trabajo. The work companion. Uh, you could also say el colega or for just friend, el amigo, la amiga. Let's get to know these guys on a first name basis. I give you Antonio, Carolina, and Javier. Now we can make some sentences with them. Last week I introduced you to the verb trabajar. Um, I work, yo trabajo, you work, usted trabaja, he works, el trabaja, she works, ella trabaja, okay? Y'all work, ustedes trabajan, they work is masculine or feminine, ellos trabajan, ellas trabajan, okay? So it follows the same pattern, it's an AR verb, as we've been practicing with. So let's get to the sentences, Antonio is the boss. Well, here we're not going to use trabajar yet. We still have to decide, is it ser o estar? Ser is permanent, estar is temporary. Boss is considered a permanent kind of description because it lasts more than five minutes. It's not like an emotion that's constantly changing. So the el, the, the he form of ser is el es. Antonio es el jefe. Antonio works with Carolina and Javier. So here we will use trabajar with is con, con. So Antonio trabaja con Carolina y Javier. He means and. Carolina and Javier work with Antonio. Well, now it's they work with him. So we're going to use the an ending. Carolina y Javier trabajan con Antonio. Keep in mind, uh, if I was using a pronoun here, I would use ellos, because even though Carolina is a female, Javier is a male. And again, you can have 99 women and one guy, you're gonna use the masculine form, okay? So um, if it's a mix of genders, use the masculine form. Ellos trabajan con Antonio. Ellos trabajan con él. Carolina and Javier, Javier are employees. Okay, so again, um, what is the third person plural version of ser? The, if I say he is, él es, they are, ellos son. Carolina y Javier son empleados. Carolina 
is Javier's coworker. Now this is different. We're talking about the possessive noun. And so let me uh, explain that. The Spanish don't have our apostrophe S. They don't deal with apostrophes. And so instead, what they do is Carolina is the coworker of Javier. And this is just anytime you want to do possessive, we do the same thing in English. We have the ability to, we just prefer apostrophe S. So she is the coworker of Javier. And the word for of is de. So Carolina es la compañero de trabajo de Javier. You can see here too, the, the, um, the companion of work of Javier. So you've got two days there, all right? Uh, two possessive ideas. Carolina es la compañera de trabajo de Javier. One more sentence for you. Let's practice that, uh, that uh, possessive one more time. C Javier is Carolina's friend. Again, we would say Javier is the friend of Carolina. So Javier es el amigo de Carolina. Ah, one more, I lied. And she is his friend too. Y ella es su amiga también. Okay, también as well. Here you can see Asia es su amiga. We made amigo feminine, amiga, because it's she. Now we can move on to new vocabulary. Las profesiones, the professions. Not that different from English, right? Speaking of which, uh, figured, since we are in an educational relationship here, it's a good career to start with. What do you call the teacher? Okay, you've got two options depending on what level of uh, student that you're working with. In elementary, middle, and high school, uh, not that they have those same uh, distinctions in uh, different Latin American countries, you know, but that group of kids are taught by the maestro or the maestra. It, master, you know, in Latin, your teacher was called magister, and and for many centuries afterwards, you know, the teacher was the master. That's changed, in um, for the most part, but in Spanish they still use that same terminology. So, you know, in here we have the conductor of the orchestra, is the the maestro in Italian. So it's not a completely foreign word or foreign concept. Okay, maestro, don't forget to pronounce those vowels separately. Then for university, profesor. Okay, in English, professor. In Spanish, profesor, profesora. Okay, yo soy profesora. And then what, in that case, what are you? Well, el o la estudiante. You know, fun fact about Spanish is they have a very difficult time pronouncing the S combinations and you know st sp we have them all the time in english but the spanish tongue isn't uh, used to making that kind of sound and so they put an e in front of it that's why it's not spanish it's espanol and in this case estudiante so let's go and uh, repeat that one more time all these terms with me maestro maestra Profesor, profesora, estudiante. I'm also going to give you a noun, enseñar. For now, I'm just keeping with AR verbs, so it follows the same pattern as estar and trabajar. Okay. Yo enseño. Usted enseña. Él enseña. Ella enseña. Ellos Enseñan, okay, O, A, and in the plural, on, okay. A sample sentence, la maestra enseña al, al estudiante. La maestra enseña al estudiante. So that's the teacher teaches the student. Uh, enseñar can also mean to show. Right, you're showing, and, and as such, you're teaching. So, la maestra enseña al estudiante. One more set of vocabulary words. In this day and age, 
I can't get away with not teaching you how to say doctor. And the good news is it's pretty simple. Again, so it's not doctor, it's doctor or doctora. You have to pronounce things the Spanish way, but it's easy to remember, right? Alternatively, medico, medica. Uh, yeah, go, go ahead and use doctor, that's fine, doctor. Uh, they're, they're pretty similar in meaning. The nurse is enfermero or enfermera. And then you're the patient. Again, very similar in uh, English, uh, paciente. El paciente, la, pe la paciente. Uh, one note about nurse, enfermo means sick. So enfermero, that's why nurse is enfermero because they help the sick people who are enfermo. So let's go one more time and repeat all of those words. Doctor, doctora, médico, médica, enfermero, enfermera, y paciente. Your verb, your second verb for this week is ayudar, and that means to help. Yo ayudo, so I help, yo ayudo, usted ayuda, él ayuda, ella ayuda, ellos ayudan. La doctora ayuda al paciente. The doctor helps the patient. Okay. La doctora ayuda al paciente. Uh, keep in mind the a. Uh, a uh, is a uh, use. It can mean to. Kind of like you're giving help to the patient. And uh, that one's a little complex. What I want to point out here is that um, all is a combination of a uh, and the, you know, the, the, the preposition and el, your, you know, the, your, your article, the. So, a el gets combined into al, but if it's a female patient, la paciente, it's a la paciente. We'll talk more about a uh, later. That one's a little bit more complex to define, uh, but pay attention to that. Okay, so la doctora ayuda al paciente. In this sentence, el enfermero ayuda a la médica just to use some different words, right? Here you see a la, because your doctor is, is feminine, okay? El enfermero ayuda a la médica. Now it's your turn, time for a little challenge. I'm going to ask a question in Spanish. First, you have to figure out what I'm asking and then try to respond. Your answer might not match mine perfectly, but you know, it should be pretty close. So, ¿Quién enseña a los estudiantes? ¿Quién means who? So, ¿Quién enseña a los estudiantes? Los maestros y profesores enseñan a los estudiantes. Okay. What was I asking? Who teaches the students? My response, the teachers, right? We got two different types of teachers. Los maestros y los profesores enseñan a los estudiantes. Note here, quien, who is uh, third person singular, so I just have an A, but when I say they teach, I do add that N. One more question. Quien ayuda a los pacientes? Quien ayuda a los pacientes? Los doctores y enfermeros ayudan a los pacientes. Okay, who helps the patients? The doctors, los doctores, los médicos, y los enfermeros, the nurses, help the patients. Los doctores y enfermeros ayudan a los pacientes. I hope you learned something useful today. Keep practicing and keep watching videos. Thank you as always for tuning in. Uh, there's more to see at apexlanguages.com. Until then, have a wonderful, healthy, safe day.